Hello and welcome back to another class guide. My name is Heiken and today we're revisiting War Tales classes. These are deep dive guides. I am doing regular guides with precise, on point, no BS, no repetition mode where we get straight to the point. I'm revisiting each of the classes mainly because a lot has changed. Helmets have come out since I released the original class guides. The Pugilist has been uh, released and the fourth class skill has been released meaning 7th uh, and 5th levels got new class skills. And I got a couple of questions from the original guide. So this is not a replacement of the original guide. This is seemingly just an add-on uh, with alternative builds. Uh, the current guide will go through two additional builds. Sometimes they are variations of the original build. Sometimes they are actually new builds. And we're going to see how they fare. On top of that, I want to add some gameplay footage, so stay tuned to see how the classes are actually playing out. Let's jump right into it. So today we're going to take a look at the Warrior, which is a fantastic class. I do have two builds brought with me. Both of them are aggressive in nature. I don't think that Warriors are great tanks. You could theoretically build them alongside uh, that roster, but I think they are much better damage dealer and therefore I want to go for damage dealing builds. A one-handed and a two-handed build uh, could be what we're going for or maybe a one target and a two target build. So uh, the two target or multi-target build will be the executioner, the uh, single target one will be the berserker. Both of them are going to be in medium armor so it's really just kind of a bruiser and not so much a tank in its core. We're going, as always, through the attributes, then the equipment, then the skills of this build, then gameplay footage, and then we're looking at the different builds. So let's start with the Executioner build. So the character builds similar to a couple of other characters, so you won't hear completely new revolutionized uh, ideas around attributes. You want to maximize willpower to get 15. You want to then go to movement. Uh, you want to over... Uh, put points into movement for uh, multiple reasons, mainly because your equipment will reduce movement. Um, so I ended up with 22 base value of movement, which is just uh, good enough to uh, get us to the wonderful 100% crit. Uh, keep in mind, I'm using base equipment. Everything that uh, I do have here is craftable for you. Uh, so that the equipment doesn't carry the build. It is really just the build. So once you have maximized willpower and gotten movement up to 22, the rest goes into critical strike. You can see that we do have quite a bit of base value, but we also do have a few other bony that are coming on top of, uh, on top of uh, each other. Uh, parts of it is the profession, parts of it is the tormentor bonus, parts of, uh, part of it is the path bonus um, for having a high wanted uh, rating, and part of it is equipment that we're going to take a look at at the second. You can easily reach near 100 or 100% crit <coughs> yourself. You can even use food, <coughs> one of the foods that I prefer uh, using if I want to maximize uh, crit is uh, the beef infused wolf ribs for uh, more critical uh, damage and uh, the stuffed cabbage for more critical hit chance. Both of them are relatively early accessible so if you're going into a difficult fight that's the way to go in my opinion. Cool, so let's take a look at the equipment next. As far as equipment, we're running an Arcadian Steel Battle Axe, um, a medium Arcadian Armor and a medium Arcadian Helmet. So level 11 crafted gear, on top of it a crafted belt accessory. What have we put on it? So the Arcadian Steel Cattle Hat does have the Brotherhood, uh, uh, does have, uh, the Brotherhood Charisma on top of it which is the brutality buff for, um, uh, for everybody adjacent. Um, before it was patched, it allowed you to gain brutality as well because you were considered your own ally. I think it has been patched by now, but it is still a really, really nice um, addition. So whenever this unit engages in combat, 
uh, which means deals damage. Uh, any adjacent allies gain brutality for one round, which is fantastic. It's just a flat out 30% damage buff. It is good since the character is typically going to stand somewhere near others. That is going to make uh, everyone's life so much easier. In terms of uh, the armor layers, uh, the Mere Brooch is potentially the most overpowered uh, single armor layer that exists. 15% critical hit uh, at the expense of minus one movement. Heavily, heavily recommend uh, that. We just put three of them in here. Uh, which allowed us to not use sharpening oil on the weapon. We're still at 100% uh, crit once we uh, ate the food. And we do have in the Arcadian Steel Battle Axe uh, two important oils. Number one, uh, the axe itself already applies bleeding uh, when it critically hits, so every single time essentially. Number two, we do have perforating oil and explosive oil, and really both of them are interesting. So perforating oil ignores 50% of the guard flat out, uh, you can't upgrade that, but it is important because uh, in all of the DPS builds you want to deal with those high guard um, enemies. Unless you're attacking always from behind, you want to be able to overcome them. Secondly, explosive oil together with the explosive oil concentrate in the belt accessory has a 100% chance to deal 50% of uh, the damage to the adjacent targets. And really, when we're going to deal AOE damage, this is going to be so, so important because all of a sudden you will see damage uh, mm, uh, jump from one enemy to another, just increasing that AOE damage even further. Moving on to the actual build. We are showcasing at first an executioner build that's a medium uh, build with a cutting maelstrom ability. That will uh, deal damage to all of the units. It takes once for every unit in the area. We want to get three to four units and you will see in a second how we're getting that. And one additional time for every unit that you are killing. So in a perfect world when you're attacking four enemies that could be up to seven swings of executioner and it will deal a lot of damage. Uh, so it's just an incredibly strong ability. We're going to use Valorous Chain every time and you attack and hit several enemies, you gain one Valor. It's just a little thank you and getting a little bit more Valor as we go. Um, we're then going into Recklessness because we want to overload the first uh, bit of damage. The first round will be most important. Uh, where we want to deal 150% extra damage. So that's 250% damage on the first strike. Uh, huge numbers will come up with that and typically you are going to be able to delete the first pack right away. Then we want to go um, into Challenging Shout and Challenging Shout is really where Cutting Maelstrom becomes really, really helpful because not only does it draw everybody closer to you, but it also applies fragility on top of that where the enemy all of a sudden uh, takes 30% more damage. And that, including with a guard, 50% uh, uh, guard reduction, including with a 250% strike on the, first, uh, on the first attack, really is the core of the build. Once you reach level eight, the build is uh, absolutely online. Well, we skilled into Lone Wolf because typically we want to kind of run a little bit behind the enemy lines, do the challenging shout <clears throat> and then kill all of them, run back and then maybe hit someone so that brutality procs. But generally speaking, you could also go for alacrity. Um, I don't see AOE attacks coming in that often, which is why I um, went with the Lone Wolf. Then class specialization as the last one, I this time uh, suggested to go with limit break as we have a 100% crit chance, an increase of critical damage by 50% simply means 50% more damage. Let that sink in, super good. They added uh, that as an extra, uh, as an extra layer <clears throat> and that uh, just increases uh, the damage of the warrior so much more. So really comprehensive build in terms of how it uh, deals damage comes in with still 32% guard. If you don't feel um, comfortable with the explosive oil, you could might as well just get rid of that and instead uh, use a hardening oil. I use uh, that quite a bit uh, where there is a 100% chance that it doubles your guard. All of a sudden you sit at 65% guard with 
quite a decent amount of defense so on extreme level difficulty that might be the right way to go where you're going to just have a nice little off tank uh, with him so that's a nifty trick that you could do in order to modify the build let's see how it plays out shall we all right, we're in a situation where I think the warrior can shine. I just wanted to highlight this particular situation. We're fighting against level 14 enemies. And typically you will see the executioner up with a starter at the very beginning. And I will have footage of that as well. But this here is a great situation to also showcase just how good that class can be. So we do have a standard attack, Maim, and we do have the cutting, Maelstrom. And we do, ha uh, do have quite a bit of movement. So what we really can do in this particular case is we can move all the way up to here. Hit both of them for a solid 600 points of damage. Then move to here. Pull the enemies in apply fragility to them in the process and uh, hit once twice oh, this guy was not fully pulled in i don't appreciate that uh, which means we're going to just hit him and sprint out so imagine we would have pulled this guy fully in then he would have also been toast a little bit of an oversight on my part but that's five dead enemies with uh, two attacks and theoretically we would have wrath even left over all right back to build number two for the warrior i promised you a berserker build but i decided to instead show you a tank build because as i mentioned they are not great tanks but i think they can make up for a decent tank if you play them well so this is going to be a bit of a spin on a tank build a bit unorthodox but if you like unorthodox builds, this one here might be just the one for you. So we're going to play a Sentinel. The reason why the uh, Warrior tends to not be as good of a tank class as the other two is because in their skill tree, they just don't have the right abilities to mitigate as much damage as the Brood or the Swordsman could. Uh, the build uh, from an attribute standpoint uh, builds just as any tank build movement willpower. So I'm not going to repeat all of that. Uh, I've used standard equipment yet again in order to showcase something, but I did a little bit uh, of a cheeky one. So you can play that build totally with a shield instead of aborting a grapnel, but I figured might as well put in uh, some content uh, from Pirates of Beleriand and boarding grapnels are a fun way of using an offhand. So instead of just building a two-hand uh, uh, build that just uses yet again a very similar composition like the Swordsman build uh, where you can two-hand tank, I figured we're going to do something different. So in order to get to that 80% guard, I again use the shielding uh, guard rune on uh, the helmet. If you don't know how that uh, functions, I go in detail in the Brute and the Swordsman uh, build. Essentially, it uh, adds 4% guard for every armor layer, so that's 12% guard right there. I used 6 uh, guard for every single armor layer itself, so uh, the helmet and the armor together are 30 guard. Uh, just with the inlets and with a b uh, pure stats of both of them we're ending up at almost 75 so very close to cap in terms of guard that's fantastic good tank good enough for what we're trying to do now that frees up both of our hands and we either could use a two-handed weapon and i played a little bit around with that but uh, i figured it would be even more fun if we do something else so i use the boarding grab now here you unfortunately cannot craft that so you will need to go to uh, pirates of Beleriand if you don't have it use a two-handed weapon uh, or simply use a shield and a different inlet to the helmet either way is fine and I'm using Peacebreaker's Axe, uh, which again is a normal rare axe that you can find. You can use any axe, uh, really, even the crafted one would be uh, fine. The crafted one deals bleeding on a critical hit. Uh, Peace Bearer simply deals uh, in its normal attack. Uh, if the unit still has guard, it attacks once more. So all I'm doing with that is getting an extra attack. So uh, nothing to write home about. And really what this build is supposed to do is it'll collect enemies and apply debuffs onto them. 
And the way that we're doing that is by using two oils. Number one, uh, the Braves oil with the respective Braves oil concentrate so that we're getting a lot of Valor. That is the primary task of the tank, um, acquire a Valor as much as possible. And then secondly, the Putrid oil, where every time a skill deals damage, there is a 50% uh, chance to apply Fever. So a stacking a debuff. And you will see that that's not the only thing that he uh, that he does. He will do quite a bit. So Grappling Hook and, uh, the, uh, and the debuffing uh, uh, axe is his bread and butter. How does that play out with the skills? So as for the skills, we're going to go with the only heavy armor that the warrior has available, which is the Sentinel build. And I mentioned it a lot of times, one Sentinel in a large group is fine because all of a sudden, when you, see you do Ovation, not, all, uh, not only do all of uh, the engaged allies gain repost, but all non-engaged allies gain inspiration for one round. And that in itself is already great because that means double movement. So on larger maps, that will save you a lot of headache. We're then going into Valorous Duel <clears throat> because we are going to engage a lot and that will always give one Valor together with uh, the uh, enchantment on the weapon that is effectively two Valor per, uh, per engage. We're then going into First Blood and this is where the build becomes interesting because not only does it increase damage against units with full health but it also applies Fragility for two rounds which is a, a debuff that increases damage by 30% on the enemy. So that um, stacks of course uh, with our Fever. Uh, so Fever and Fragility both increase the damage on enemies, which is why you can see that he basically wants to pull enemies close with a grappling hook, apply that um, first blood Fragility on them, and then maybe go for another enemy and apply Fragility as well, really setting up all of uh, the enemies to be killed. We continue in the theme of AoE buffing and have another nice buff. The unit and all of its allies in the area gain brutality for three rounds, which is a damage increase by 30%. This here is another 30%. And then we do have Fever with 10% on top of it. All of that stacks multiplicatively. We're then going for Lone Wolf, mainly because the other two weren't particularly fun to um, skill into. So if we are the lone frontline at the beginning of it, like just moving forward, the damage of us is increased and the damage taken is reduced. That's all we can ask for. Class specialization then into limit break because critical damage 50% more is just too good to pass it by. Even though our crit uh, is a meager 51% uh, with uh, the right food, we're going to go up to 65%. So it's two thirds essentially in terms of uh, critical uh, strike which is okay for a tank. But again, this build is not supposed to deal damage. Primarily, it's uh, supposed to create Valor. Then secondarily, it's supposed to um, tank. And uh, tertiary, it's uh, supposed to debuff the enemies and essentially group buff all of it in one build in a Valor positive uh, fashion. So that's really great. It's a lot stuffed into one build. Let's see how it performs. Good, perfect. We are engaged yet again with a level 14 enemies, far above our level, and it's a scattered battlefield. That is a great option for our warrior to come in and just save the day by essentially clustering them up a little bit more. We see the defender here goes first, um, and really what we want to do is we want to make sure that all of uh, them are standing nice and as close as possible together. So we're going to move to here and are grabbing the first of uh, them. This allows us uh, to nicely position ourselves where we want to be positioned. If we look at uh, this guy, he already has fragility going for them. Uh, which uh, means he'll take more damage. As we disengage, we take a lot of damage, unfortunately. And uh, I should have used our inspiration beforehand. And whilst we're at it, how about this nice little battle cry? So 
This time we're going to be a little bit more careful. Weakening uh, should have uh, been applied first. Let's see. Yep, much uh, less uh, damage. And we're applying multiple fragilities onto this guy, actually. So let's just take a look at uh, what we've done at the end of the day. Uh, their main um, front line deals less damage and takes 30% more damage, fragility for two rounds, and has a feather uh, stack for even 10% more damage. We pulled the other one closer. Uh, again, this is the leader of uh, the entire pack, therefore also the amount of damage. But uh, the this guy now has a fragility debuff um, and stands there uh, just like uh, his, uh, his other foot soldier. I could have potentially disengaged with run uh, to take less damage. We overall are still very much fine, although the hit from the leader definitely has taken its toll. However, we have enabled other uh, others with our play, and if we're now looking at the third uh, person that's coming in, we're still tanking, we're very, very uh, sturdy, and we have clustered them up very, very nicely. So from an originally disjointed battlefield, we have um, positioned a very much more jointed battlefield. All right, we're done with the build guide and deep dive uh, to the specific class. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like guides, I do have plenty of them for War Tales. If you enjoyed what you've seen and took value out of it, I would appreciate if you leave a like and a comment uh, down below. That always helps to propel the videos and helps the channel. And it's a little bit of given, uh, given back. Thanks for watching. See you on the next guide and have a great day. Bye bye.